The field of animation has been one of the most interesting forms of film, and its history goes almost all the way back to the very early years of cinema. While these early animated films are of course crude by today's standards, they are still fascinating artifacts from the infancy of the art form. What actually qualifies as the first animated film is debatable and depends on your definition, but the earliest surviving animation on standard picture film comes from J. Stuart Blackton. He was born in the UK, but came to the US at age 10 and worked in the American film industry, eventually co-founding the highly successful Vitagraph Studios. His first surviving work with anything resembling animation is a two-minute film called The Enchanted Drawing from the year 1900. It stars a man in live action and played by Blackton himself, quickly drawing pictures of a male face, a cigar, and a glass of wine on an easel. The stop-action animation comes in when Blackton grabs the wine and cigar off the paper and they turn into real items, and when the man in the drawing magically changes his facial expressions. This was accomplished using the substitution splice or stop trick, where the camera cuts and then starts filming after something in the frame is changed, creating the illusion of an instantaneous change. Although an extremely limited example, it's a clear precursor to what became known as animation. A more fully formed animation was made by Blackton in 1906, a three-minute short film called Humorous Phases of Funny Faces. It used stop motion and cutout animation, and depicts a live-action hand drawing images on a blackboard that come to life. The real hand is only seen in the beginning, and most of the runtime has no live action. The short uses simple line drawings to depict people, including a man in a top hat blowing smoke into a woman's face, and cutouts to portray a clown and dog. Like the enchanted drawing, it's a fun little diversion without any sort of plot. Another very early animation pioneer was French caricaturist and cartoonist Emile Cole. He was part of the short-lived incoherent movement that was founded in the 1880s and prefigured surrealism, and his animated shorts definitely have a surreal feel. In 1908, Cole made the first film using what we'd now call traditional animation methods, titled Phantasmagory. The less than two minute short depicted a stick figure and several objects that transform into other objects. Like humorous phases, it starts with a live action hand creating the drawings, but the rest is entirely animated. Also like Blackton, Cole goes for a blackboard style look, but uses a different technique to achieve it. Cole drew black lines for over 700 frames on pieces of paper, but the film was then printed in negative to give it a white on black look. There's not really a narrative, and the surreal, stream-of-consciousness nature of the short comes from objects morphing into other objects with no apparent rhyme or reason. For example, a wine bottle transforms into a flower, and then an elephant. Cole produced more shorts in this style, like The Puppet's Nightmare. It also had the chalkboard style and featured a series of unsettling transformations. Since it portrays a nightmare, this could also be considered an early example of the horror genre. Also in 1908, Cole directed A Love Affair in Toyland. This one has the same basic style, but actually has a simple narrative of a woman annoyed by suitors. It still uses the morphing technique, but saves it for scene transitions. Cole switched up his style with the 1910 short The Neo-Impressionist Painter. This short has a much more straightforward and clear story of a painter who attempts to sell his canvases that consist only of one color, by pretending they represent a scene full of objects in that color. For instance, he claims his entirely red canvas is actually a cardinal eating a lobster with tomatoes by the Red Sea. Unlike the other Cole shorts, this one features some live action with a real painter and model, while his made-up tableaus are animated. The animation is still relatively basic line drawings, but they are certainly more sophisticated than what Cole previously produced. Instead of the chalkboard look, the animated sequences are all black lines on a solid color, like blue, green, or red. A key filmmaker in the development of stop motion was the Spaniard Segundo de Chamon, who uses the technique in early science fiction like The Electric Hotel. His 1908 short Modern Sculptors utilizes stop motion trickery, making it look like clay is forming itself into shapes. So this is basically the first claymation. Another early stop-motion pioneer was Brit Arthur Melbourne Cooper. His earliest surviving film with animation was Dreams of Toyland from 1908, 
which has toys coming to life in a nightmare. Like a lot of these early shorts, it had a live action frame story. The short has a surprisingly disturbing ending with a violent crash before we return to the framing device and the child wakes up. Three years later in 1911, we get Little Nemo, the film debut of American cartoonist Windsor McKay. The animated short was based on McKay's newspaper comic Little Nemo, which ran from 1905 to 1914. Little Nemo, along with his other strip Dream of a Rare Bit Fiend, brought McKay success and fame. He claimed he was then inspired to make cartoons by flipbooks. He also referred to himself as the first to produce animation, and the credits even explicitly state this, but obviously that wasn't the case. Again, we get an animated short with a live-action frame story, and like with Blackton and Cole, a real hand draws the characters on camera. The film consisted of 4,000 frames that were drawn by hand on rice paper and then photographed. These drawings were much more sophisticated than what earlier animators made, and they are even in color. However, there are still no backgrounds or environments. At times, Little Nemo has a similar shape-shifting feel as the work of Emil Cole. Blackton supervised the production at his Vitagraph Studios, casting clear doubt on McKay's claim to be unaware of previous animation. Little Nemo also has some fantastical elements, like a dragon that shows up at the end. McKay's comedic How a Mosquito Operates from 1912 actually has a story, albeit a simple one about a mosquito going after a sleeping man. It's entirely animated with black-on-white line drawings. It's a bit morbid and could be thought of as having some horror elements. Then in 1914, Windsor McKay created Gertie the Dinosaur, the first film of any kind to feature a dinosaur. It also had 10,000 hand-drawn frames, which was a staggering amount of the time, mostly made by McKay himself and his assistant John A. Fitzsimmons. Furthermore, on a technical level, it was probably the most refined work of the era. The animation consisted of line drawings, but they were remarkably expressive. The animation is quite detailed, with little touches like the ground sagging underneath the weight of the dinosaur. There are also some pretty detailed environments, and again a live-action frame story this time with McKay and other animators as actors. In 1912, Russian stop-motion animator Vladislav Starovich made what is considered the earliest surviving puppet animated film, The Beautiful Lucanita. But instead of using what we think of as puppets, he used dead insects. Starovich tried using live insects, but found them uncooperative under the bright lights needed for filming. The nine-minute short is set in what appears to be medieval times, and tells the story of two bugs fighting over a female. It features a sword fight, and even an impressive depiction of bugs laying siege to a castle. That same year, Starwitch released The Cameraman's Revenge, starring animated beetles. The short film continued the unsettling usage of dead insects for stop-motion animation. They even get to drive a car and visit a nightclub this time. The Cameraman's Revenge's plot is quite singular, as it's about infidelity among insects. For this short, Sarowicz even used the common silent film technique of using color tints as indication of time of day. Next, we have The Grasshopper and the Ant, based on a 19th century Russian version of one of Aesop's fables. It again has insects with anthropomorphic behavior, and we see the grasshopper playing violin and taking a bow. In this one, the insects are even given dialogue through intertitles. The Grasshopper and the Ant earned Starowicz a commendation from Tsar Nicholas II, just a few years before he would be deposed in the Russian Revolution. In The Insect's Christmas, Starowicz branched out a bit, as in addition to bugs, this also included Father Christmas, a doll, and a frog. In The Lily of Belgium from 1915, Starowicz finally got in on including a live-action frame story that he cuts back to throughout. This short film is much more serious than the others, as it is an allegory for World War I, which had started the previous year. A short called Animated Putty was made in 1911 by Walter R. Booth, who also made the first British science fiction film. Similar to modern sculptors, it uses stop motion to show clay that forms on its own into various shapes. It has no plot, frame story, or live action elements, but could be thought of as having horror aspects when the clay turns into devil faces. In 1913, Animator John Randolph Bray created his first movie, The Artist's Dream, also known as The Dachshund and the Sausage. It was historically significant because it was the first film to use animation cells, which are clear pieces of celluloid that are drawn on. Cell animation was the dominant form for almost a century until the advent of CGI. 
Like Blackton and Cole, the artist's dream used live action footage as a frame story and showed an artist drawing the images. The very basic plot of the animated sequences consists of a dachshund eyeing a sausage. The Dinosaur and the Missing Link, a prehistoric tragedy, was the first film by Willis O'Brien, who later created the stop motion effects for the original King Kong in 1933 and even won an Oscar for his work on Mighty Joe Young. The six minute film is about three cavemen trying to attract a woman and features a dinosaur, creatures that O'Brien would create again two decades later in King Kong. Also, the titular missing link in this would serve as inspiration for Kong himself. The subtitle calls this a tragedy, but it's much more comedic with silly names like Mr. Rockface and Stonejaw Steve. And finally, in 1915, we have Dreamy Dud, about a child who decides to smoke before being dragged up into the clouds by a spirit. It has crude backgrounds and even multiple locations. Dreamy Dud also uses on-screen dialogue, and was one of the first animated shorts to get sequels, with more shorts starring the character coming in the following years. While these films and filmmakers have been largely forgotten, even by cinephiles, the techniques they pioneered made the next century of animation possible. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.